get started with our practice, um, our new moon practice, I have a blanket handy here. Um, you can have pretty much the blanket should be good enough for the practice today. You can always have blocks um, nearby if you feel like you need something to bring the earth up for you. Um, just a quick little couple notes about the new moon. So the new moon is a time where we actually start to turn inward. Um, it's the seed side of the moon where we kind of turn inward and nurture ourselves and take care of ourselves and probably don't have as much energy um, at this time that we do typically during the full moon period. And it's a great time for introspection to look and see like what kind of seeds and intentions do you want to plant in your life um, for not just the moon cycle but just for in general so it's a good time to reflect a little bit and kind of think about what you want uh, for the new cycle in in the upcoming month or upcoming cycle of the moon so with that all in mind the practice today we're going to keep it pretty um, pretty mellow just do a lot of uh, low flows, and then we're going to hold our postures for a while in some yin poses, uh, some deep stretches. So this will be to nurture the body and just to kind of really turn inward and listen to what is going on. So let's go ahead and get comfortable in that seated position, whatever that looks like for you. You can use that blanket if you'd like to pop yourself up a little bit higher. We're going to close the eyes down, roll the shoulders up towards the ears, and relax them down the back. Turn the palms upward and let them rest gently on top of the thighs. And just take a few breaths here. Turning inward. And maybe thinking about, just at the beginning of this practice, what those intentions are for this new moon for the cycle ahead. Staying tall in the spine, just taking a few more breaths here. And then gentle the eyes open, bring the palms together at heart center. Take a nice deep inhale. And on the exhale, let's draw the hands up and around, great big circle, and then gently bring them back into heart center. Do that a few more times, starting to waken up the body, drawing this nice big circle around and coming into center. Once more, drawing the circle around the body, and hands come into heart center. Let's get a little bit of a side body stretch. Extend the hands up tall and long, roll the shoulders away. Bring that right hand down onto the earth as that left hand stretches and reaches across. Opening into side body, take a few breaths here. You can keep that gaze down towards the hand on the earth or up towards that extended hand. Now keeping that right hand down onto the earth, release that left hand and it's just going to hover above, just right above the hip line over here, and then take that ear over towards that right shoulder. Get a nice opening into the neck. Feel free to find any gentle movements, maybe swaying that hand back and forth, or you can create a gentle fist. Really getting a nice stretch and opening into side neck here. Bring that palm over to the lap, and then we'll gently press away from the right hand, 
Bring it back up towards the ceiling. Left hand raises up. Grow tall here for a moment. And now we'll take that right hand, the left hand down onto the earth and stretch and reach, opening into side body here. Take a few moments to really feel that opening in the ribs and really reminding that right hip to stay down onto the earth. Releasing that hand, but keeping it hovering above the ground as we draw that left ear over towards that left shoulder. Feeling a nice stretch and opening on that left side of the neck. Or excuse me, actually, we should feel it in the right side. We're leaning towards the left side. You might want to find a little bit of movement in the hand. And then gently place that hand back down onto the lap, press into that supporting hand and raise all the way up. Roll the shoulders up towards the ears and release them down the back. Let's do that one more time. Nice dramatic shoulder roll up towards the ears and release down. Nice. We come over into our tabletop position. You can use those, that blanket to pat up the knees if you would like to. This is our flowing portion of the practice before we start to hold some of our deeper postures. So coming into that tabletop position, go ahead and stack the knees underneath the hips and the hands underneath the shoulders. Starting with the tailbone, tip the tailbone in towards the ribs. And just very slowly, it's just a slight movement of just tilting that pelvis back and forth a few times. And then we'll build on it in a moment here. Then we're going to start to come into our cat cows, but our cat cows are going to take it a little bit further and start to bring it down into a child's pose as well. So follow with me as we dip that tailbone in, round into the upper back, dip the chin down into our cat pose, and then drop the belly down, take a peek up and through into our cow pose. Tuck the chin in, round into the back. And then as you're rounding into the back, start to sink the tailbone, start to sink the hips down into a child's pose. Bend the elbows and melt down. We're not staying here super long, we're gonna keep flowing. So press into the palms and slowly, really good, kind of snaking that back through, come into our cow pose. Chin tucks in. Tailbone tucks in, round into our cat. And at the peak of our cat, start to bring those hip points down towards the heels. Bend into the elbows and come into our child's pose. Making this movement nice and slow and fluid. Start to press that crown of the head through, bring that chest through the shoulders and come into our cow. One more time, round into the back, dip that chin in towards chest, stay here for a moment in our cat, and then start to bring that tailbone, the bottom down towards the heels into our child's pose. We're gonna hang out here for a few moments, so if you'd like to extend the legs out wide, you can, or you can keep them nice and posed and close to each other in a more of a seat posture. Then it feels okay to melt the head down and the chest down. Go ahead and do so. Or you can even use that block to bring the forehead down if it's not quite coming all the way down. Take several breaths here.
into the hands and then slowly rise all the way back up. Step the knees back underneath the hips. Now tuck the toes underneath. We're just gonna walk the hands back. If you would like to come all the way up into a kneeling position, you can, or you can keep the hands down on the earth. We're getting a nice toe stretch here. I like to have my knees onto that blanket for that padding. And if it's feeling too intense to keep that toe stretch with the hips coming back, keep the hands down onto the earth. Then you can always just kind of shift back and forth. Or you can come up tall and keep really pressing that toe mound down onto the earth. Such a great way to wake up the feet and just recognize the stretch in the fascia of the feet and get them ready for the, if you are practicing in the morning for the day ahead. Take a few breaths here. And then very slowly, if you are not already on your hands, start to release the hands down, untuck the toes, and paddle out the feet a few times. Now we're going to get into the ankle stretch. So shift those hips back once again. And again, this might be where you just want to stay, or you can start to bring the fingertips behind the body and just stay here for a few moments to stretch into the front of those ankles. Another way to challenge yourself and get more, to get more depth is to bring those knees up. Pretty intense, so make sure that you're still breathing and that you're not bringing tension in the body in places that it's unnecessary to. Hold here for just a few more breaths. And then very slowly walk the hands forward place them onto the earth, bring those feet up, and just kind of rotate out the ankles a few times, maybe flex out the feet, and just feel the sensation of that stretch on the foot and on those ankles. All right, place those toes back down, keeping them tucked underneath, walk the handprints, one handprint forward, and bring the knees up off of the earth, and come into our downward facing dog. Since this is our first downward dog of the practice, go ahead and find some nice, really slow pedaling out. Just bending one knee generously as you press the heel down to the earth on the opposite side. So checking in and making sure that we're not holding any tension in the head. You can even maybe wave the head around a few times. Coming into stillness in this down dog, let's hold it for just a moment, pressing the heels down towards the earth. And take a few breaths here. Take your time to slowly guide the knees back down onto the earth, coming into our tabletop position again. We're going to extend that left foot behind, raise it up to about hip height, and then bring that knee all the way around and through coming into a lunge position. We can walk that back leg back a little bit more so we can get more of a stretch into that front hip flexor on that left side. Bring the hands to the top of the legs. For coming into a yin, we consider this our dragon pose. We want to really keep pressing the top of that back foot down and that front foot we're pressing firmly into all four corners of the feet. Hands are on top of the thigh. Let's just stay here for a few moments and breathe. Pull the shoulders down the back. This is an empowering stretch. A lot of things can come up in the mind. Let's just see if we can just stay in a sensation. Keeping those shoulders square. That 
compressed fluid. We're here for just a few more moments. So yin postures are not always uh, comfortable poses. They could be a little challenging. And a lot of things can come up in the mind, but I find that usually the mind tells us that we need to fit before the body does. So just stay here for a few more moments. And our tall dragon, slaying our tall dragon, And then raise the hands slowly above the head. Keep pressing firmly into that front foot. We're going to guide the chest forward and the hands come forward. And then just moving very slowly, let's raise up and then lower down. Keeping those hands now in front and then rocking up, maybe coming into a little gentle back bend. Just a few more times, shifting forward. And rolling up, feeling that strength in the lower half of the body and the fluidity in the upper part. And then when we come back forward, go ahead and plant those hands down onto the earth. Tuck that back toe underneath, release or bring that knee up and release that front foot and come back into that downward facing dog. Taking a moment once again to pedal out. And when you feel ready, go ahead and bring those knees back down onto the earth. We're going to go to that on the opposite side now. So now that opposite leg extends long, no higher than hip level. Bring the knee in towards center and stamp it down into the front. You might want to walk that back knee out just a little bit more. And then hold here before we come up into our tall dragon. Finding that nice stability here. Then bring the hands to the top of the thighs, roll the shoulders away from the ears, growing tall, make sure that we're staying tall as if that crown of the head is extending up. We keep pressing firmly into that front foot. Notice if you start to sway to one side and see if you can center those hips and continue to breathe here. Working to strengthen and stretch. And like I said in the last one, empowering the body here. This is a strength pose that we typically don't hold our lunges for really long. This is a great way to check in and just see if you can keep sinking that tailbone down and that crown of the head up. Continue to use that breath to meet the challenge. You're strong and capable. You can do this. Now bring those hands above the head. Shift the chest forward, hands follow. And then raise up, maybe find a little back bend as you raise up and back. Keep pressing into that foot as you come forward and roll up. Two more times, shifting forward and rolling up. Embrace the wobble. It's a little bit of a tricky balance on. Come forward, back up, and then melt back down. Place the hands, framing the foot, tuck back to underneath. Raise that knee up off of the earth and step that foot back. And find a few moments here to pedal out again and down dog. Just enjoying 
a little bit of movement after that powerful hold. Then bring the knees back down onto the earth. Big toes to touch. We're going to come into a child's pose variation with our twisted, um, our, excuse me, we're going to twist our ropes up top. So I'm going to come down for our spring, my knees down, big toes to touch. If you would like to use that blanket under the knees, you can use a block towards the front, or one other option is to take this blanket, fold it in half, and just have it up at the top of the mat. <clears throat> so a couple different options here. Coming into this child's pose, before we land down fully, walk the hands forward. We're gonna shift that left arm underneath the right arm, crossing at the shoulders, ideally crossing elbows next to each other. And if that doesn't feel comfortable, then just keep the forearms here. Melt the head down onto the earth and shift the hips back a little bit more. Might take some adjustment with that blanket or that block, bringing it closer to the body. And if you feel claustrophobic at all, then that might be an indication that you want a little bit more height to bring that head up. Keep those palms up towards the ceiling in a state of surrender. And breathe deep here. Just check in and see if there's cases in the body that you're holding tension that you can release. Maybe it's in the hands. Maybe it's in the face. Maybe it's in a space that you can't even imagine, but as you do a body scan, you might realize that you're holding that tension. Such a great stretch for the shoulders. And we're working to strengthen as you work to stretch. Also good for the hips as we keep sinking that tailbone down. Three more long deep breaths. Very slowly, feel your forehead up off of whatever prop you have. Take your time to uncross the arms. It's very important to move slowly out of these postures. Bring the knees back together. Let's come up into that kneeling position and we're gonna raise those arms out to the wide T. And then just give ourselves a hug here. Open back out. And then coming into that hug once more. And then releasing out. Let's come back down into that twisted ropes again, but we're going to have that opposite arm on top. 
So shift those knees out wide, bring the hips down. Now taking that right arm over the cross of the left arm, extending it out long and wide, ideally trying to place the biceps or those elbows by each other. But if that's too intense, then just keep those forearms into that twist. You might need to adjust that blanket. And then take your time to roll yourself down here. Sink the hips down. And breathe into the shoulders here. As the mind starts to wander, see if you can just bring it back to that breath. And bring it back to that sensation in the body. Being present. I'm aware of what is going on as we breathe in and breathe out. here for five more deep breaths. Start to peel that forehead up off of the top. And take your time to slowly unwind the arms. Bring them forward now. And we'll just shift back and forth a few times. Bring that blood flow back into the arms and into the hips. Sometimes where we really feel the effects of those long holds, is that between moment when we start to find some movement. Bring the knees back underneath the hips, the hands back into that tabletop position. Find a few of those cat cows again here. And just notice like that sensation in the arms, like feel that tingling movement of the blood flow. Coming back into that tabletop position. Let's walk that elbow point down. Keep the palms down now. Hips are staying up into our puppy pose, our melting heart pose. So walk the elbows and the hands nice and wide. And then release the chest and release the forehead down onto the earth. See if we can keep that tailbone up high. We'll take a few breaths here. Broadening the collarbones and give you another stretch into the shoulders. Should feel good for the back as well. We're not here for super long.
Raise the forehead up off of the earth and start to lower all the way down to the belly. Coming down to the belly. It's a big belly, as you can see. Coming down to the belly, we're going to fold that right hand across. So I'm creating this 90 degree angle with the front of the mat. I'm going to rest my forehead down onto that little pillow I'm creating with my forearm. Taking that right foot, or excuse me, left foot in towards the glutes, and reach around with the hand to the hold of the top of the foot. So this is a passive hold here, a passive quad stretch by keeping the forehead down onto the forearm. If it's inaccessible to take a hold of that foot, you can always use a strap or maybe a tie or a dog leash to wrap it around the top of the foot. Settle in here. And breathe deep. Make sure that you're not turning that leg out in the opposite direction. You want to really keep that ankle in line with the knee on the top of the quad, really pressing down onto the earth. A little bit of arm strength, a nice little old shoulder opener too, by holding on to the top of the foot. that breath to soothe out tight spaces. Very, very, very slowly start to release the foot, allowing it to come down onto the earth. Bring the forehead up off of that forearm. Stack the elbows right underneath the shoulders. Come into our sphinx pose for just a moment. Walk the feet a little wider, and then just shift the hips side to side a few times. Centering the body into our space posture. Let's just drop the chin down towards the chest. Keep the shoulders rolling back towards the spine. Breathe into the back of the neck. Slowly raise the head back up and take that opposite arm. So now that left arm will create that 90 degree angle, resting the forehead down onto that forearm. Draw the right foot in towards the body and take a hold of it with the right hand. Just noticing how the side feels different. Our body is not symmetrical at all, so it may be very different from one side to the other. Feel the rise and the fall of the belly as you breathe in deep. Turning inward. Mm 
check in and make sure you're keeping that hip pressing down on the earth and that knee in line with the ankle that it's not falling out to one side. Here for three more breaths. Very slowly release the top of the foot. Allow it to fall down to the earth. Raise up off of the forearm. Come back into our sweet pose. Widen those legs a little bit more. Roll the shoulders away from the ears. Dip the chin down towards the chest. Let's just draw those little half moons peeking shoulder to shoulder. Coming back to center with the head. Hold our sphinx posture for just one more moment. And then go ahead and bend the knees. Bring the hands up. We're going to slowly come into our seat posture for just a moment to reset after these back bends. So it is very much like our child's pose, but this time we're going to keep the knees together and roll down, bringing that forehead down, and you can bring the crown of the head almost like a rabbit. Keep those shoulders rolled around and those hands down towards the ankles. And just allow the back to drape over, the shoulders to drape over the knees. And take several breaths into back body. We're not here for very long. We'd like you to focus for a moment maybe on that intention that we talked about at the beginning of practice. Thinking about turning inward. Maybe planting a seed for a goal that you are aiming for. Slowly bring those hands back around to the front and raise yourself back up. We're going to swim those legs around to the side and then gently release all the way down onto the back side. Take your time to get here. Coming on down onto the back. We're going to cross that left leg over the top of the right leg. So we had our twisted ropes earlier in practice. Now we're going to find our twisted roots in our lower half of the body. So crossing that right knee over the top of the left knee. We're going to pick up the hips and bring them over towards that left side of the mat. Then allow the knees to fall down towards the right side of the mat. You can place that hand gently on the top of the thigh on that left side. And then bring that left right arm out into a T or a Y shape. 
So you can get that stretch into the armpit, chest, and into the shoulders as well. And then find the position of the head that is working for you, either looking and gazing over towards that extended hand or keeping it centered. Breathing into this twist. This is such a great stretch for the IT band, for the legs and the glutes, hips. Allow gravity to help open up here. You do not need to force it. That hand that is there for guidance, it doesn't need to be pressing down. It takes time to open up into these postures. And it takes breath and patience. So speak kind words to yourself. Nurture yourself and just enjoy being here. holding this side for just a few more moments. Begin to deepen the breath. And take your time to slowly bring that head back to center, release the arms down, and unwind the legs. Centering the hips onto the mat, walk the feet as wide as the yoga mat, and allow the knees to TP in towards each other. Feel that unwinding sensation here. Like I mentioned before, really, you might feel the postures more, the effects of the postures after we come out of them than when we're in them. Keeping the knees bent, walk the feet in line with the hips. Now crossing over that left knee on top of the right knee. Pick up the hips and bring it over towards that right side of the mat. Then allow the knees to waterfall down onto the left side. Arms can come out into a T. And you can take a peek over the shoulder. I'm adjusted here. <laughs> It's just a variation of the twist that we were just in. We're right here for just a few moments on the side. Thinking about what we can 
this twist out of our life that we bring out of our life, the way a sponge where we're just twisting and letting go of things that no longer serve us. Continue with that nice, long, deep breathing. We're here for just a few more moments. Centering the head. Bringing the hands down slowly. Bring the knees back up. Walk the knee, walk the hips back in line and release the cross of the legs. Walk feet wide and allow the knees to keep the in towards each other. Take a few breaths here. pressure into the feet as we draw the knees in towards the chest. Roll into a little ball here, peeling the chin up towards the chest, or towards the chest, and the forehead towards the knees. Hold into this little ball. And then release the back of the head down onto the earth. Let's come into our happy baby for just a moment, drawing the knees down towards the chest, down towards the armpits on the outside, and just hold here for a moment, or you can even find a little bit of gentle rocking side to side, or maybe extension in one foot while the other one bends. Just explore for these last few moments together. Bring these hips back, open again. And that stretch in the hamstrings and in the groin. And when you feel complete, go ahead and bring those feet back down onto the earth. Extend them all the way down to the bottom of the mat. Draw the shoulders underneath. Pump the chest up towards the sky. Take the hands out into a state of surrender, palms up, heels fall in towards each other, toes out, and just breathe here in our Shavasana. Feeling the effects of this deep stretch on the body.
and the deep in the breath. Start to slowly nod the head from side to side. Find some wiggling and some movement in the toes and the fingertips. Rolling out wrists, rolling out ankles. Bringing your energies back to this present moment. Extend the hands overhead, the toes down towards the bottom of the mat. Stretch and reach, reach, reach. And with a great big exhale, release the mind. Place the soles of the feet back onto the earth, bend into the knees, rotate over to one hip, and rest for just a moment with the head on the forearm here. Our posture of rebirth. And such a great posture to think again about our new moon, about our new cycle. Congratulating ourselves for showing up in our bodies today. And maybe that's the intention that we should set. An intention of nurture and self-love and care. Press into that top palm, come all the way back up to seated, take your time to arrive. Gently bringing the hands back into heart center, roll the shoulders down the back. Let's take another inhale here. And open up, exhale, let it go. Inhale. Exhale, release. Thank you, yogis, for sharing your time and your energy today. I hope you found some nurturing and some newness in your practice this morning or afternoon. Have a fantastic rest of your day. Maybe take a moment to journal anything that came up in this practice for you, or maybe your intention for the cycle ahead in your new moon. Thank you again. Namaste.